What is up guys? It is Joe. We are back. We're talking ball about the Cats and in today's video we're talking about some wild NIL stuff going down in the college football landscape. I want to give you my thoughts on it and tie it into Kansas State, how it relates, so on and so forth. And I'm really excited to talk about this topic because it's been a crazy 24 to 48 hour period. If you've been following on social media, I'll talk about the topic here in a sec. But it has been a whirlwind in the NIL Wild West landscape we live in today. And I'm excited to talk about that and how it pertains to Kansas State. Before I do get into things here, let me quickly acknowledge I've been off the grid a little bit. I was big sick and then I was big sad after that BYU game. I'm back. We're back in action. The sickness and sadness hiatus is gone and we're back to talking ball. And I'm excited to do that today. Before I do get into the topic, quick reminder, please consider subscribing. It helps me out a lot. At 3,000 subs, I'm getting a leg tattoo with a cat script tattoo. So be sure and help me out by hitting that button. It takes a few seconds, and we're less than 500 subs away, and I'm excited to get this thing going. But let me preface by maybe saying the understatement of the year. NIL is insane. In a, in a good way and a bad way, it's a crazy concept. Obviously, players have been paid beneath the table for years across different programs. Kansas State doesn't have a ton of history with that. Obviously, there's schools out there that have been you know, gotten the death penalty, had some different recruiting bans, some different things like that. Kansas State hasn't had that. That being said, players do deserve to be compensated for their worth. Let me say that up front. Players deserve to be paid by the NCAA, by the teams, by whatever. They absolutely deserve money. This video isn't supposed to sound like me coming off as a boomer saying, nobody deserves to be paid, go back to being an athlete. That's not me. I want dudes to get the bag. Get as much money as humanly possible. That's what I want for the players. But we're going to talk about one specific storyline that is interesting to talk about. And it started at UNLV. If you caught it on social media, there's a veteran quarterback out there that decided to use a red shirt and transfer halfway through the season. Following the first three games of the year, the UNLV Rebels are a top 25 team, I believe they're ranked 23rd right now, and quarterback Matthew Sluka, I hope I'm saying that right, it could be wrong, has elected to use his red shirt and transfer. He released a statement on it and talked about the process, and in that statement, I'll read it to you here in a sec, he basically said, I was promised X amount or X amount of NIL support, I got zero of that, so I'm transferring because they went back on their word. To paint the picture a little bit here, Matt Sluka is a fifth-year senior quarterback with more than 6,000 passing yards and a touchdown-of-interception ratio of 65-16 to 16 in his career. He's been a solid quarterback. He's played for Holy Cross four years prior, and then as a fifth-year senior, decided to transfer to uh, UNLV. The Rebels have beaten Kansas. You saw that game on national television. They've beaten some good teams. They've earned the 23rd-ranked team in the country moniker. They're listed 23rd overall. They're 3-0. They haven't lost yet. The team is on a roll. In addition to his passing numbers, I should mention, he's also a dynamic rusher. He's got more than 3,800 rushing yards in his career and 40 touchdowns on the ground. So Luke is a good football player. That's long story short, he's a good football player. The thing that stands out in his statement, and this is per Pete Thamel, because I know there's a thousand things going back and forth. If UNLV said this, the quarterback said this, this guy said this, his agent said this. I'm making this video on a sheer reaction to based on what we know so far. We essentially know that nothing's happened, like from a, a standpoint of what is confirmed. We know nothing. That being said, I'm going to go with one of the smartest dudes in college football, and I'm going to roll with what Pete Thamel said until new news comes out. So if you see this outdated and it's changed, that's just the case of the way, the way the situation goes. Pete Thamel said this. Former UNLV quarterback Matthew Sluka's NIL representation, Marcus Cromarty of Equity Sports, told ESPN that Sluka was verbally promised a minimum of $100,000 from a UNLV assistant coach for transferring there. None of that money was paid for. The only money he received per UNLV is a $3,000 relocation stipend for his move. Cromarty said there is never even an ask for more money after UNLV's hot start, only the initial amount he was promised up front. When that didn't come, he evaluated his options and decided to play elsewhere next year. The redshirt will allow him to play a full spring at a new school and develop with the trainer this fall. He enrolled in July at UNLV after graduating from Holy Cross and missed the spring. So that's what he said. The actual statement from Sluka, this is what I want to read you, because there's one point in Thamel's thing I want to talk about. Sluka said this, I decided to utilize my redshirt year and will not be playing any additional games this season. I committed to UNLV based on certain representations that were made to me, which were not upheld after I enrolled. Despite discussions, it became clear that these commitments would not be fulfilled in the future. I wish my teammates the best of luck this season and hope for continued success of the program. Fine and dandy. The main thing is, someone went back on their word. That's what Sluke is saying. In the report from Pete Thamel, the thing that stuck out to me is that UNLV basically came back and said, no, what happened? Here's what actually happened. We, we started off 3-0. He's a good enough player. He came and asked for more money. We didn't do it. He transferred. That's what happened. That's crazy to me, first of all. I'm going to stick with the, the side of the university screwed over the kid, then I will the kid screwed over the university. That's not the way I'm going to go with this. But the point of what I'm saying is, if an assistant coach promised this, because the, the university released a statement and the, uh, the collective released a statement, the collective said, hey, that's not us. Whatever was said was said. It wasn't us. We didn't sign off on anything. If a coach uttered the words, we will give you six figures to come here, and you say, okay, great, I'll be there, and you get three grand out of pocket, you're 97 grand short, and the basis of why you transferred there in the first place was for the money, 
you should absolutely quit. I know people are going to sit there and say, well, don't quit on your teammates, don't do this. This is my sta- my take on the stance. I'm not even going to relate it to if you were working a job and you didn't get paid, you'd quit, right? That's not what I'm going to say because I know that that's such an on, on-the-nose one. What I will say is this. Don't talk to me about the team if you're going to start the team on lies. Don't give me established principles about lying, saying, oh, hey, this is what we have in store for you. And then when we say, hey, all right, where's that, man? Let's cash in on that. What's the deal? You say, nah, it's not happening. That can't be the situation. Do not establish our relationship based on the premise of a lie and then expect me to lay down for the, for the sake of the team. There's no team. This isn't a team environment. Teams don't lie to each other. You're honest up front. You tell the truth up front. If you want me to go to your university, tell me what I need to do and t- I'll tell you what I need to do for you. Don't make it a, hey, this is what we could do for you and then go back on your word a few games in after it's too late for me to do something else. That's ridiculous. But to continue on the story because I don't want to give you all my thoughts yet. I have more to say. Following his decision to transfer, the running back, Michael Allen from UNLV, also said, you know what, I'm redshirting and transferring as well. A redshirt junior, Michael Allen, has the second most touches in the running back room, and he didn't say that it was for NIL reasons, but he did slip a jab in there late. He said this, after three games, I've decided to utilize my redshirt and enter the portal in the end of the season uh, as a redshirt junior. I'm grateful for UNLV, and I wish them nothing but success. Expectations for opportunities, unfortunately, were not met, and I'm excited to continue my football career. That was his first post with a highlight tape. He then followed it up with this. My decision has no ties to NIL agreements. This is due to on-field opportunities. I did not receive a dime from any UNLV collective. First of all, wild. Pay your players, UNLV collective. That being said, I get it. I get that people transfer for different reasons. UNLV, good football team. They didn't give him what he wants. That's fine and dandy. It blows my mind that these dudes are at the situation where, okay, because we got screwed over so bad three games in, whether it's on the field or you know in the money situation, I'm saying, you know what, this 3-0 football team, this top 25 team I'm on, I'm out. If they're going to do this, I'm out. It's totally fine if you want to look at it and say, well, that's a selfish move. Sure, I won't dispute that. I won't say, hey, they're doing something for themselves. I won't do that. That being said, it is crazy to me to read through this story. Moving down the thought list here, I've got a lot of different things mapped out. The kids aren't in the wrong, man. I'm not going to say that here. I mean, maybe you can say that, well, the better opportunity for you is to finish out the season, play a really great season, and then, you know, sue the university or whatever the case is. Maybe that's the case. I think there's probably an element to say that, but... This is truly a dude that's being the first of this massive tidal wave that's coming behind him. Because I truly guarantee this won't be the last kid you see this season, and it sure as hell won't be the last one you see all the time. The idea, though, that a university, like say K-State says, you know what, hey, XYZ receiver, you'll be wide receiver one. You're not four games in, you transfer out. I get it on the football field stuff, but saying, hey, man, they didn't give me my money. What is the university doing? If you as an assistant coach said this, and you're still in a position on that staff, follow through with it. Don't tell kids, like, don't recruit kids off lies, man. That's not how you want to build a program. And from everybody around the thing, it doesn't sound like Barry Odom, the head coach of UNLV, does care at all. I mean, this is similar to a Jaden Rashada situation when he didn't get his money from Florida, jumped back and forth, all the different stuff, sued Billy Napier, sued the team. There's so much going on with that. But the idea is, we're never going to know who's in the right here. I would assume these reports will keep throwing things back and forth. The kid says this, the team says this, the collective says this. The idea is that this isn't going to be the last time it happens. That's what I'm trying to express in this. That being said, it makes me thank the Lord above every single day for Wildcat NIL and the good, solid reputation we have there. They're not dudes that are here to skimp you. They're not dudes that are trying to lie and cheat you into coming to Kansas State. That is never how you should build a university, whether it's from an NIL collective perspective or from a coaching staff perspective. Even if the kids come into that thinking, oh, yeah, I'll do this. If they don't get it, I'm out. I get the transfer portal has no consequence right now. I get that money is ridiculous right now. But the fact of the matter is this will keep happening across the nation, and it's one thing that should smack all of us in the mouth to remind us saying, hey, Wildcat and IL, thank you for being you. Curry Sexton, thank you for being you. Ryan Hennington, thank you for being you. Everyone associated with that, Pearson, Pearson McAtee, everyone in the Wildcat and IL circle, thank you for being here. Thank you for doing it the right way. Thank you for not being UNLV. That's what I want to say here. Don't be UNLV. And I'm not trying to say this is a warning, but if you're in a situation where you have to lie to dudes to get them to come here, something's wrong. I mean, that's the thing. I get that you can sacrifice for a team. Hey, don't quit on your teammates. I get that. Don't lie to me to get me to come here to be a teammate and then ask me to be a team player. Don't lie to me and then tell me I'm not being a team player. Don't do that crap. That's just not the way you build a team, man. I get that there's people out there that say, well, kids shouldn't be paid as much. This wouldn't be an issue. Sure, that's a blanket way to look at it. I will provide my own situation here in a second, but it's just crazy to me the narratives involved in this. And this story is going to keep developing. It's going to keep being insane, but it's one where you just got to sit back and thank Wildcat and Al. Thank you for doing the work they do. Thank you for the incredible fundraising they do. They're not trying to be skeevy. They're not trying to take the money out of your pocket. They're not trying to, you know, jip the kids off money. That's not the case. Jerome Tanks talked about it at length saying, hey, 
there's an alley right here for, for where we can succeed. Kansas State has the donors. We have the support. We have the university backing. We have everything we need to succeed in this era of college football, college basketball. What UNLV showed is they don't. What teams around the country show is they don't. And they're scraping at scraws. They're saying, hey, we can't get this kid in the portal because we don't have the money. We can't get this kid to even visit here because we don't have XYZ things set up. It's one thing to accept that and move on. Say, you know what? Damn it, we can't recruit this kid that's worth 400 k Let's go get the 100 k kid. When you do that, instead of saying, oh, yeah, we got you, dog, and then you recruit him, he gets on campus, and then you don't have the money, and he's just saying, dude, run me my money. What's going on? That is such a crappy way to build a program. And even if this comes back and says, you know what, the kid was mistaken for this reason, this reason, UNLV is getting all the wrong press for this situation. Barry Odom's program, all the wrong press for the situation. Do you want to go play for the guy at the program where the kid allegedly got gypped $97,000? On a verbal agreement, I get it wasn't in writing, but a verbal agreement. It all comes back to the NCAA. It does, absolutely. The NCAA not stepping in, having their own practices set up, that this stuff doesn't happen, that's an issue. So my solution is this, and this could be stupid, this could be wrong. I'm not in the conversation with these guys. I don't know all this stuff ins and outs, but the way the NBA does Supermax contracts, one, everything needs to be in written contract. Don't make a verbal agreement. It has to be written. You're going to pay me 100 k Sign in writing you're paying me 100 k so I can pursue legal action against you if you, don't, if you don't go through with this. Give me the opportunity to actually see it in writing. Don't just tell me. And maybe that's on the kid not following through and saying, all right, let's get this in writing. Maybe it's a situation where that's just not the case. But the fact is, there needs to be contracts, wide-scale contracts. Whether it's, hey, two years here, three years here. If you go out one year, give this money back to the collective, X, Y, Z amount of money. Do this stuff. That's the way you want to see it. But the thing that needs to happen, and this is kind of the blanket term, give us a Supermax contract cap. The same way that Anthony Davis is worth $276 million to the Lakers, whatever the case is. I don't actually know the money like that. Make that number across the board the max money. Make a $500,000 cap, a $1 million cap for every single athlete in the country. If you are the best of the best, if you're the number one player in the country, the max amount of money you can get is $1 million. Doesn't matter if it's a K-State, doesn't matter if it's a Wake Forest, doesn't matter if it's, you know, I don't know, Division II Iowa Dort College. Doesn't matter what the case is. A million dollars is the max anyone can pay a player. That's the way this thing's going to change in years past, or in years going forward, excuse me. Make it a $1 million cap. Whether you want to choose to do outside endorsements of the cases, there's going to be give and take with that. But the general blanket term of fixing this is saying, all right, let's actually do something as the NCAA. Let's step in and say, hey, guys, this was a messed up situation. UNLV, you're responsible, pay him 97 k Or say, all right, UNLV, you're responsible for damages if the kid can't find a next college. Whatever the case is, give her some type of art. Settle that thing. Get that thing figured out. All right, you pay me 50 k We're good. Forget about it. Make it a situation where that's wrapped up and then say, all right, so this doesn't happen again. Nobody's allowed to redshirt mid-year. If you get screwed over by the program, have it in writing, legal precedent is going forward with that. But the fact of the matter is this cannot keep happening, and it's crazy to me to watch this story. And I sit here on my high horse. I get that I'm not an NIL guy. I get that I'm not a player. I'm not an athlete. I'm not a coach. I get there's shortcomings with all this. There's lies, truths on both ends of the spectrum. But it should not be this hard to get right. I know it's a tough concept. It's an impossible concept. But a kid getting gypped out at $97,000 should never be the case. Conversely, if the kid's in the wrong and actually did ask the university and say, no, I'm worth more money, I'm out. The kid should not be able to leave. The only way you could possibly redshirt should be a medical redshirt, or mid-season that is. Or it should be a situation where it's XYZ thing, you have to meet these certain parameters. If you don't, then you stay. One free transfer. Don't transfer multiple times. If you're transferring for money, you have to say that. You have to declare that with the university or the collective or whatever the case is. There's got to be practices in place. And I say all this to say, I am so, so, so thankful that I'm not sitting here as a K-State fan talking about K-State saying, this is what K-State did wrong. This is what Wildcat NIL did wrong. This is what this did wrong. That's not the case. We get to learn from other mistakes. Jerome Tang says it. A smart man learns from others' mistakes. He learns from his own moments, obviously, but if he can learn from other people, that is where you want to go right. So thank goodness for that. We're not sitting here talking about K-State chipping kids 97 grand, where the case is. That's not the case. But this is not going to end anytime soon. That's the gist of what I'm getting at here and evidence of that. Is this NIL related? I don't know. I don't want to make this claim because it's not yet. What I hear, it's not. Barry Alexander, one of the best defensive linemen set in a USC, young kid, talented kid, top 60 prospect coming out of high school. Tonight, maybe an hour ago at the time of recording this, obviously you're probably watching this on the day after I'm recording it, but at basically 9 o'clock p.m. Central Time, Bear Alexander said, you know what, I'm redshirting this season. I won't play. From the reports, it sounds like it's a snap thing, it's a playtime thing, it's like, hey, we didn't come here to be sitting behind multiple people, we came here for this reason. That's a different situation than NIL reasons, I get that. But it's crazy to me how much this stuff changes in the span of one thing. The floodgates are open. 
That's the gist of what I'm saying. Whether it's a situation that the kid gets screwed, the university gets screwed, or the whole process is ruined, the crazy part is none of this is going away. So thank you, Wildcat and IL, for not putting us in the middle of this. Thank you for doing things the right way. Thank you for taking care of us all. We appreciate you. We love you more than can be. And guys, I'm going to be back. We're going to talk about this Oklahoma State game here after the game. I feel good about the Cats. The depression wave is gone. I'm back on the boat. We're back. The Cats will be ready. It took a 31.6-minute scoring, you know, freak-out montage for BYU to beat us. I can live with that. BYU is a crazy environment. I would never want to play there myself. You're back at home in front of your fans. you got your guys ready to roll. You're going to get a good team coming in. But this is a bounce-back time. Chris Klein has done it, and I'm excited to talk about that. So we'll see that as it comes out. But, guys, I appreciate each and every one of you for listening to my little monologue rant here. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Let me know your thoughts on the situation, if I'm completely wrong or right, whatever you feel. Let me know what you think about the process as we continue to go forward. But, guys, it's going to do it for today's video. Take care and go Cats.